How many of you have actually burned out before? Done so many different things, context switching, et cetera. This is actually very fitting because of the you know, talk Ben just gave. Um, who's actually looking out for us? Who's actually out there making sure that we're okay, um, that we're taken care of? My name is Marina Wijay. I'm a developer advocate at Solo. I work on all things DevOps, uh, service mesh, VPN, whatever. Um, but here I'm talking about burnout because that's another thing I advocate for. And the reason why I do that is because I think we need to normalize this conversation. Um, one thing I will say is I'm not a professional. So please do not you know, take any of this as like advice. If you need advice, um, you know, seek a professional. Get that extra assistance where you need it. I have a coach. I work with them. Um, one thing I also need to point out is that imposter syndrome Burnout and anxiety are three different things. Sometimes they may intermingle with each other, but they are their own things on their, on their, as themselves. Um, for me, you know, burnout seems to be one of the more reoccurring patterns that I see in my, my entire career in my life. Um, and so sometimes you have to sit there and think, you know, what are these triggers? What's making you burn out? What's getting you to the point of, hey, I don't want to do this anymore? Um, and so, you know, there are different situations or different instances where that might come up. You might feel physically exhausted. You might feel demotivated. You might have reached your mental capacity. Um, you might go to some level of coping mechanisms. You might be pro procrastinating. I procrastinate a lot. Um, but this happened to me in 2016 where I actually started doing so much. I took on so many projects. I flew out from Austin, Texas to, to uh, New Haven, to Baltimore. And, um, after coming from Austin, Texas to Baltimore, uh, I was pulling out of the car rental parking lot and I started crying because I was just so exhausted that things didn't turn out really well in New Haven. And that just happens, you know, things expect to be okay, but then you never really know how things turn out. Um, and so here we are today. Um, I solved all of that and then 2021, I hit it again. I reached, I reached that patch of burnout where, oh my gosh, things don't motivate me anymore. I'm not intrigued by what I'm working on, even though I'm doing all these things. And I would find things to do to you know, keep me going. And so I had to stop. Um, with, also, with, with that kind of thought of, hey, you're always saying yes. How many of you watched that movie, Yes Man? Okay, think about that um, for a second because I had lost the thought. But it goes back to this context switching where you're doing so many things because you've said yes to everyone that when you're running that kube cuddle command to switch your context, you forget which one you're actually on and you're deploying something to production when you shouldn't have been doing so. Um, but that happens. That context switching will happen and it becomes challenging. So what do you do? Establish boundaries. Say no when you can say no. Um, you know, book that time off for yourself. Make sure that you limit your own capacity so you don't over-provision yourself. How many have over-provisioned storage and then realized you can't write to your, your sand anymore? It's like that. Um, so you kind of have to step up and say no when you realize that there are so many things going on in your life that if you start saying yes, you're going to start to fall apart. So your leadership also needs to be on board with this. If they're not on board with this, you need to be vocal about it. Because if you're not, well, I'm sure there are leaders here that are hearing this talk right now. You all need to think about the people that work with you because they are burning out. It's a reality. What about developer advocacy and burnout? It's happening. I travel a lot, which means I have to deprioritize projects just so that I can come and give up talks. Um, and that hurts. So when you think about that, how do you work around these things and how do you work around these situations? Um, so it's really down to you, like how do you recover? And for me, what I do is I've got a gaming system. I'll go home, power it on for an hour, shut down all the other noise, and then I'll game for a bit because sometimes you have to clear your mind. Um, I also encourage you, if you know, there's open spaces, share your story about, story about burnout because I think it'll encourage more and more folks to actually you know, talk about it and talk about it with the community because I think the community is, is here for us. I think you know, we're here at DevOps Days London to share these particular stories. We're not here to, you know, let's talk about a demo of you know, how do we get service mesh onto a Kubernetes cluster. We're not here to do that. We're here to share our journeys and our stories. So this is what community is about. And that's why I come here to talk about this stuff. Um, I do this on Twitter spaces as well. Um, unfortunately, they go on for four hours sometimes. So um, I can't do this in four hours. Um, I also want to point out that Divya and Julia had some excellent talks about burnout as well at KubeCon and some other uh, conferences. So please go check them out when you have a chance. So thank you, everyone. Come chat with me about burnout.